What is up, everybody? Welcome to Dad Needs to Talk. I'm your host, Robert, and today, today we are back. <laughs> it feels a bit strange. Um, I'm like, I'm kind of having to like, to like try to like remember like, like what is my usual spiel? Um, you know, for those of y'all that can hear, you know, I decided to bring the music back just a little bit. Um, and of course. It won't be Danny's talk without bashing his shenanigans in the background. If y'all end up hearing that, apologies, but you already know, life of a father. But yeah, I am back. But before I keep going, <laughs> let me cut the music. Like I always say, if this is your first time here, welcome. But if you're a returning listener, and or a watcher, then welcome back. We are back after a a mini, mini hiatus of, of what, two, three weeks, something like that. Um, and yeah, so we're we going to kind of just talk through some stuff. Um, <laughs> a lot's happened in the few weeks. A lot's happened in the world. A lot's happened in my life. A lot's happened in the nerd community and everything in between. But I just wanted to start off by saying just, you know, my heart goes out to everybody across the world. Because, like I said, there's just so much stuff going on out there. And, you know, just just wanted, like I said, just to put some positive vibes and positive thoughts out there for anybody that might be listening to this that, you know, might be going through some things or have gone through some things or have been affected by stuff going on. Um, just know we are here and we will make it through it together. Um, so yeah, y'all two to three weeks. <sighs> um, it has been some time of, I don't know. I don't know if self-discovery is the right word, uh, but my, maybe more so like self-reflection um, is kind of what's what I've been trying to go through over, over these weeks while I was away. Um, I feel like it's freaking freaking ring lights like right in my freaking <laughs> glasses. But um, but yeah, a, a lot of stuff has happened. I have I have some very exciting things I do want to talk about in a little bit. Um, but I got, got to start off with, you know, uh, a little shout out. I don't know. Hold on, let's see if I can get the. Uh, hold on, y'all. <laughs> we uh, we 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 playing around with with some audio. And turn that down. Hopefully it's not too loud. But um. Shout out to my nephew, Cyrus Hefford II. Um, those of y'all watching the video, I have a clip plan of my nephew's graduation because, like I've talked about before, be before I was a dad who needed to talk, I was an uncle who needed to talk. And so I was so happy and so proud to, you know, be able to see him uh you know ha have that moment um of his graduation and shout out to all my nieces and nephews um the for for those of y'all who do not know um what i'm showing on camera these are my sister's kids uh so much love rest in peace to my sister shonda um we love and we miss you but the, these are her awesome children my very dope nieces and nephews um so for like i said for those of y'all watching watching the video the picture on the left side you got um the oldest son isaiah next to him is the baby girl lydia mr graduation cj and then the the young queen herself sarah uh so yeah so uncle robert went and spent some time with my very awesome nieces and nephews um after we did the graduation 
Um, I, I went over to their house and was there all night because um, the, the graduation was like at noon on a Friday, which threw me for a loop. <laughs> um, but, you know, went out there, enjoyed the graduation and then just enjoyed, uh, you know, and enjoyed time with the family. Uh, you know, like I say, just, you know, spend time with the nieces and nephews, but uh, also, you know, getting a chance to kind of like spend time with my brother-in-law and, you know, me, me and him just kind of just talking and, you know, he, he has definitely been a, a go-to person for me, you know, as I've been trying to navigate through just, just a lot of just life stuff, just because for one, you know, you know. He is, he's my brother-in-law, he's my brother, he's a friend, and he's somebody, he's known me my whole life, um, because, you know, he, you know, our families grew up very close together, and so, you know, he, him and his family were always around, and, of course, you know, him and my sister got married, got, had the kids, and we've had a lot, a lot of adventures in between, and so, um, but yeah, but like I said, just, just life in general and just also, you know, uh, getting advice of, you know, him also being a dad who has done, you know, him and my sister did a very amazing job raising all my nieces and nephews. Cause like I said, like, you know, they are what, 22, oh Lord, <laughs> 22, 20, 18. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, that that's right. Yeah, 22, 20, 18, and 5th, 14. <laughs> All these ages. So, you know, we got three young adults. And then, you know, Miss miss soon-to-be high school. Um, so, of course, you know, like I said, he, he is somebody who, you know, we can just talk and just be honest and open with each other. And so, you know, I can kind of like, you know, tell him stuff I'm kind of going through or struggling with. And he can, you know, definitely offer me tons of advice because he's lived through it all, seen a lot of stuff, been through a lot of stuff. And so I, you know, greatly appreciate, you know, uh, spending time with him and with, with the family and stuff. And very dope thing he got me was this very dope planner in my favorite color, blue. Um you know, just to kind of help, help me try to get organized and like get, get my life in order. Um, you know, cause like I said, you know, I, I've, I've been making some strides, but he kind of helped me fill in certain other missing pieces. Um, and, and, you know, just giving me just different perspective, um, on, on many different things. <clears throat> and I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit raspy, you know, I was dealing with a little bit of a cold like a week ago or whatever. And like, I'm about to like get some tea or honey, something or whatever. Uh, Cause I've had this freaking raspy voice for a little bit. So apologies if, if my voice upon my return is not as soothing <laughs> as it may have been in podcast episodes past. But, um, but yeah, but it, it, like I said, it was just very dope just getting a chance to go out there and spend time with the family, nieces and nephews, and all that fun stuff. Now, with it, with this break that I had, um, you know, like I said, it just kind of just gave me time to kind of just like sit with my thoughts again and kind of like I said, just like try try to figure out what I needed what I need to do. And I've, I've already begun, you know, taking strides and steps in the direction that I need to go t to, um, to try to put myself and my family, you know, in, in better situations, um, and, and, in better living positions and things of that nature. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, but every, everything will be okay. You know, like I said, I have, uh, you know, I've taken this time to find, you know, like I said, find my resolve and, you know, come to terms with the reality of, you know, certain decisions and things I need to do. And so now it is just a matter of, <clears throat> it's just a matter of executing on those um, ideas and thoughts and stuff. So. Um, but I will say, 
The social media break definitely was much needed. Granted, most of y'all know I didn't 100% stay off of social media. Um, I, I, I did fairly good, though, because I would say at least until maybe like end of last week, uh, I didn't do any post. I, you know, maybe at most, maybe like like to post on Instagram, maybe like the tweet here or there. Um, I did a lot of lurking, you know, I might've reshared some cool stuff I saw on my Instagram stories, but I did not do any actual posts. Like I said, until like last week, some big news happened. I was like, I got to say something, but, um, but yeah, but it, it was nice. Um, I think at least for the time being, maybe, I don't know, I'm about to play around some stuff. Um, I might kind of keep the minimum of uh, the minimalist uh notifications and stuff kind of muted like how i have now um i i took off all these social media apps off of like my home page of my phone so i have to go through like extra menus and stuff to even get to them so even that alone just like creating like one or two extra steps that to, to do instead of just like oh i unlock my phone and boom it's right there. i just click and i'm in it it's like okay gotta get on my phone gotta scroll through search find you know, stuff like that or whatever. So not too difficult, but still a couple extra steps to where it's not just immediate, you know, as soon as I open the phone. So I think that I might kind of keep for a while, but, um, but yeah, but like I said, that, that, that definitely did me some good. Uh, like I said, taking the break on that. So a little bit of housekeeping stuff. I kind of want to get to, um, so first of all, I want to say, uh, content wise, so I I'm going to experiment with shifting some stuff around. So and granted, you know, knowing me, you know, I've always, you know, originally my podcast was always like comes out like Monday, Tuesday, or whatever. It was Tuesday for a long time, and I kind of like moved it around as needed. But I think I'm going to try to go with a Wednesday release because that gives me a few days buffer to where, you know, know, if I can record Sunday or Monday, cool. If not, you know, like I say, kind of like I say, it just gives me a little bit of wiggle room um, with some stuff. And then maybe post and maybe like a manga review on Mondays and then maybe doing something on Friday. So maybe, you know, doing a couple of different reviews, you know, on Monday and Friday or whatever. Like, so I'm kind of just play around and see how things go. Um, I do definitely want to go ahead and just say like, I just because, and this is something I kind of touched on a little bit in, in my last episode when I was kind of just talking through like why I took my break or whatever, but uh, I want to kind of get back to like, kind of like, like diversifying my conversations I'm having, which I feel like I have been doing, you know, these last, this year in particular with all the different guests and stuff, whatever. But just because, you know, like I, like I said, I might've mentioned before, it's like, I've kind of found myself in a couple of different bubbles that I'm glad to be a part of, but I don't want to be seen only as those things. So like, you know, I enjoy doing the manga reviews or whatever, but you know, I want to make sure that that's not the only thing that everybody associates me with, which, hey, like I said, hey, y'all know, I'm going to put y'all on some fire, which I got some stuff behind me. I'm going to show y'all that I got. I'm going to show y'all in a little bit. But, um, but, oh, like, I want to just, just diversify the conversation and stuff more. Um, and so with that being said, you know, I, I'm thinking about in which I had already kind of started doing this a little bit anyways, but for one, um, let me see, you know, I'm kind of wanting to make sure I'm not, um, cause I never set out with the goal of being like a seasonal anime review podcast, like the homies over at Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Um, I watch a lot of seasonal anime and I talk about a lot of it, but I'm not going to try to keep up with as much stuff as I was in the past, you know, cause like I said, just for one, that's not what I'm here to do. And two, you know, I don't want to force myself to watch something just for the sake of like, Oh, everybody's expecting me to talk about 
the next episode of XYZ every week. It's just going to be like, no, you know, I will talk about, I'll, no, I'm still going to have my, as I've always done, I'm still going to have my sections of like, hey, what I've been playing, watching, reading, and, you know, kind of mixing around the order of those things. But those those things will still be part of my conversations but like I said, I just might not talk about a million of it might just be, hey, the couple of things that kind of bubble up to the top of like, hey, this was a very dope episode. I need to talk about this this week. Um, otherwise, I'm a kind of just, you know, just kind of just do like, like maybe even just like just general shows. Like, oh, you know, A.O. Ashi this week was really good. Good. But, you know, I don't need to have like a timestamp for like me talking about A.O. Ashi for 10 seconds, you know. Uh, so I definitely like so doing that and same thing with the manga, which I had already kind of gotten away from that a, a while ago. Uh, but, you know, like I said, just just kind of just know, just continue to like incorporate some manga and other stuff I'm watching within the podcast itself, because I kind of want to reserve like, OK, hey, if something is getting a separate review it might be either because like, hey, this was super dope and I want to give it its own spotlight, you know, especially if it's like something that's new or a hidden gem or something that's unknown. Um, otherwise, I'm going to kind of, you know, just talk about it within the podcast itself. And, you know, I'm, I might kind of play around with maybe like, you know, like breaking that out into like, you know, a separate video um, just to kind of like, you know, like creating multiple, multiple forms of content <coughs> from the pod like I said, instead of me doing multiple separate recordings just okay no i recorded one thing and then i can break out highlights and stuff whatever like that but um but speaking of of reviews and stuff so I'm gonna put y'all into some game real quick for for my fellow um, book readers in general, manga, regular books and novels, uh, maybe even a couple of comics. So, um, so first of all, I gotta say, shout out to Yen Press for putting me on game. So, I shot my shot. I, uh, this was like a couple months ago, whatever. Um, you know, just because. Um, so, and actually, let me take a step back. Um, on top of a shout out to Yen Press, I for sure gotta give a shout out to. Um, <sighs> Sorry, y'all. I had to pause for a moment. <laughs> I had to go. I had to run to the store real quick. And get some stuff from my wife and make me like a little a little tea remedy so I can freaking get this crap out of my throat and done. Um, but as I was trying to say for the millionth time, <laughs> shout out to like I said, Yen Press, but also shout out to my friend Mama Loves Manga. Um, because back when I had her on my podcast for our Valentine's Day episode, um, you know. I got a chance to kind of, you know, just talk with her and pick her brain on some stuff and get her advice on some stuff just because, you know, she she has been doing this for a while. And so long story short, it was just more of a, you know, because of course I'm like, you know, because she got, you know, she um, has so many awesome uh, deals and partnerships with some of these uh, manga publishers and stuff. So, okay, okay you know. It's one of those things of like, of like, okay, how how do I get there? How do I get to that point and stuff like that or whatever? So anyway, so a few a couple months ago, or whatever, I just kind of you know looking at the different publishers and like a lot of them, like on the surface level, it is like, okay, how do I even get in touch with them? You know, because most of them don't have like a business email on their on their social media thing most of the time. Um, but <clears throat> Yen Press had their DMs open, so. I messaged them like, hey, how how can I make this happen or whatever? And so while I don't have the physical part done, they did give me some very helpful advice. So to all my friends and listeners that are 
watching or listening to this, there are two sites they tell me about. One called, it's called, it's, it's like Edo, Edoese. It is a, hold on, let me see if I can, because uh, I got something on my screen. Okay. Uh, give me one second. I got something, y'all. But, because there, there, there's something off to the side I can't show. <laughs> but, one side is called uh, Edelweiss, E D E L W E I S S Plus, and the other is NetGalley. Now, both of these you can register for free, and so you know you can register as like media, um, reviewer, things of that nature, and and you can put in request for digital review copies of manga and books man <laughs> once I learned that now yes I have been on hiatus but your boy been putting in a little bit of work um, as y'all will see in the coming weeks with some reviews and stuff I have coming but I got a chance to Discover some very awesome series that would have never crossed my radar. Now there are there are some things that like just came out like you know like Crazy Food Truck which I already have, um, you know was on there and some other stuff. But I came across some gems. Um, I came across a very awesome manga, which will probably be my next review that y'all will see in the coming days. Called When a Cat Faces West. It is by the same creator as um, Mushishi, which shout out to Zaria from Past, Present, Future Podcast because she loves the anime. She talks about it a lot. And so I started watching it, but I'm going to get into all that stuff a little bit more and once I do the review for for that manga. But, um, but that was a digital only manga that I just happened to see when I was browsing through what they had. So check it out. Um. Like I said, you you might get access to some stuff, um, and it'll kind of also help with you know, along with being able to maybe cover a little bit more series that you might would have if you had to come out of pocket for everything, whatever. Also, you know, just a way to kind of help build up yourself as well. So, um, like I said, hey, I'm just trying to just put that out there for y'all. Of course, I'm no big expert. I just got onto it a few weeks ago, <laughs> but thought it was some like some general knowledge that i wanted to share with people that um that listen or watch this show to to look into that um like i say you might might find your next favorite uh hidden gem um uh, amongst the stuff so so yeah so like i just like i just wanted to touch on that um and apologies for all the weird stops and pauses and stuff but I have to, you know, just so I can kind of make it through, uh, make it through this podcast with me taking gradual sips of my, of my tea. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, so enough about that and content and stuff. So big announcement time. So this is something I've been working on behind the scenes for, um, dang, may maybe a couple months now. So, <clears throat> so all the details aren't finalized yet, as far as like, <clears throat> as far as like specific date and time. But I can at least announce this part because. I got confirmation that things are set in stone. Um, we're just waiting for the final schedule to come out, but I have clearance to officially talk about this now. So, your boy was approached by Fan Expo Dallas with the opportunity to do a live panel, a live podcast recording panel at Fan Expo Dallas on. June, which is going to be the weekend of June 19th, June 17th through 19th, which which is Father's Day weekend in a few weeks. 
Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna be doing a panel at freaking Fan Expo. <laughs> I am so excited to have been offered this opportunity. Now, before I get to more specifics uh, on, on what the panel is going to be, or, or I guess, I guess, let me let me go and talk about. It. So the panel will be called <clears throat> Networking the Anime and Life Changer Panel. So Networking the Anime and Life Changer Panel, where basically I'll be talking about how networking has helped me both professionally as well as in my nerd life as well because it's, ex it's exposed me to so many new series whether it be anime and manga so on and so forth comics and stuff tv shows but <clears throat> the dope thing is that i get to bring some friends along with me so <clears throat> first up the homie, he has been on, Dad needs to talk more than anybody else so far. He is the mind behind <clears throat> the Inside the Mind of a Blur podcast. And I am talking about my homie, Scuba Steve. He is joining me on the panel to talk but <clears throat> but he is not all the other person who I got who is joining me and Steve this is somebody who I have been wanting to collaborate with for a long time she is a nationwide stepper as, as some, some might call her she is the co-host of the Blanime podcast, my girl Sine from Blanime, is going to be coming through and we're going to have the dope trifecta of Dad Needs to Talk, Inside the Mind of a Blurred, and Blanime all represented on this panel on one of the biggest stages fan expo dallas so i kind of wish i had some sound effects like some applause or whatever but i'm gonna give myself some applause man <clears throat> y'all do not know how hard it has been to keep my mouth shut <laughs> um of course some of y'all knew i was doing something but nobody knew who at least nobody knew who I was coming on that, that I was going to have with me or whatever. Um, but when, when they re when, when they're, uh, uh, event coordinator reached out to me, like I said, a couple months ago and offered me the opportunity. Of course, my first thought was like, okay, this gotta be a scam or something. Because little, little old Robert, little old dad needs to talk. You know, who, who somebody wants to hear dad needs to talk, talk. And so, and so here we are, y'all. <clears throat> this is a big first step for me, for my podcast. Hopefully for, even for, um, you know, um, Steve, Inside the Mind of a Blurred, and Sine and Blanime. Uh, this is a amazing opportunity that I am so grateful that I get a chance to be a part of. And I will let y'all know, once I get concrete details on date and time, because I already know some of y'all are going to be there at the event but um i should know by the end of this week hopefully they said like the schedule and stuff should start going up towards like the end of the week um so for sure by next podcast episode um i'll be able to let y'all know 
you know, what, what is fully going on with that. But uh, I, I am just so happy to finally, like I said, get to get to say something. And like I said, in that, you know, I you know, I feel like I probably could have gotten, I'm pretty sure I probably could have made it through by myself, but, but I asked him cause Hey, you never know until you ask. I was like, Hey, um, can I, can I have some people on my panel with me? And it was like, Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. What, what, what do you need? What, what, what's your, what's, what's your idea? Pitch us your idea. And I pitched him the idea and I'm like, Hey, I want to have, you know, Steve and Sine with me. And it was like, okay, yep. Y'all, y'all will get access. Um, and, and we will get, you know, our little weekend passes and all that fun jazz. So I am so excited just because just know if, if things go well here, this will be the first step of many because I was already eyeballing the, eyeballing the calendar and future things because and, and I guess you no know, honestly for me this is also just a sign of like hey I need to be a little bit more confident in, in myself and and in what I do uh, just because because like yes I've only been doing this for a little over a year but there's opportunities regardless if you've been doing this for a year a few months or several years there is an opportunity there is space for everybody like I said, sometimes it just takes either somebody reaching out to you or you reach out to somebody. Um, like I said, with, with the whole Yen Press and the and the um, digital manga access, um, which I, I, got, I got access to something else a while ago, which I was happy about. That, that's why I was like, mm, I can't show you because it was like up on like the little corner. <laughs> but uh, but yes, so so yeah, so so be looking out for for the uh the podcast trinity of Rob from Danny to Talk, Sine from Bland and May, and Step Nation, and my boy Steve from Inside the Mind of a Blur. We just come through. Um, I hope so. I know, like audio wise, it'll all be recorded. I got to figure out a plan for the video stuff because I. A situation like this, I would love to get it recorded. So I have a few weeks to try to come up with a plan. So hey, if, if y'all have ideas and suggestions, let me know. Um, heck, if, if you're gonna be at a fan expo and you are a camera expert, hey, come through. Please record for us. I would be eternally grateful to you. So <clears throat> rolling along. Cause I, I've done 30 minutes of lots of talking and stuff, whatever. Um, but needed to be done cause I've been gone for a while. So <clears throat> few things I want to touch on. Um, first off, I'm, I'm going to start with this rumor and just get it out the way. Cause it's something I saw a while ago, right before I started recording. So I get on Twitter a while ago. This may be like a few hours ago. And I see my friends over at, uh, um, Lord, Religiously Nerdy, um, Three Muslim Bur- Blurs podcast. I see them talking about Bleach and Disney Plus. And I'm like, that's a weird combination to have in one sentence. And so I go Google search. Or not Google search, uh, search on Twitter for the words Bleach and Disney Plus. So, apparently, and this is all rumors, so that's why I'm not going to spend too much time on it or whatever, but rumor is that there is currently a bidding war going on between Disney Plus and Crunchyroll for the streaming rights of Bleach. Uh, specifically, the, the upcoming Bleach Thousand Year Blood War arc, the final arc of the series, that many people are anticipating coming back this October, there appears to be potentially a bidding war for the streaming rights. Now, honestly, for me in general, I'll be like, hey, I got it all. I'll watch it wherever. But 
Um, cause, cause I see some people being like, Oh, if Disney get it, they're going to be censoring it. And da, 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 da. no, they're not because case in point with summertime rendering, um, summertime rendering is on Disney plus in Japan. Um, and that is still mature rated, still bloody gory. So censorship is not the thing we should be concerned about. The thing we should be concerned about is them simulcast, um, simulcast releasing it, um, weekly because right now with summertime rendering, it's only weekly on Disney plus in Japan, everywhere else people are hitting the high seas, um, yar <laughs> and going to the dark corners of the interwebs to watch um summertime rendering which sucks you know which hey I, I am i am part of i am part of the straw hats um i am part of the um of uh I am part of the white beard pirates, whatever you know, the Roger pirates, wherever you want to put me. Um, I'm out here on the high seas watching my summertime rendering. But like I said, it's like, man, like they just don't know. <sighs> like them, them pulling the old mess that, ne that Netflix used to do where you had to wait until the season was done and months after that before they put it up on the streaming service. Now they finally, Netflix finally started with like a, a blue period and Comey can communicate um, during weekly releases. And so come on, Disney, get it together. Cause like I said, like, like, like I said, if, if they can change that rule around, then I don't care where it goes. But if they're going to still do like the no, we're going to hold it until it's over. That's not going to work because it, it's already a pain in the butt for summertime rendering and because that's going to be 25 episodes. So, which means summertime rendering isn't probably going to be on, on Disney Plus outside of Japan until the end of the year, if not early next year. Because 25 episodes, that means it's going to be airing from now until at least October. And Bleach Thousand, Thousand Year Blood War arc, that arc was like 200 some chapters. So, 200 some chapters con con condensed to anime episodes. Man, we wouldn't, we wouldn't see Bleach on Disney Plus for like five years. Because <laughs> that arc is going to be airing for probably a good year or two, if not more. I feel like. So, anywho, we'll see where, the, where that situation goes. So, on to other stuff. So, I guess, I guess I'll go and just stick with manga stuff first. So... <clears throat> We got a, a a new face on Twitter. <laughs> and that face belongs to Togashi, the author of Hunter Hunter. Who in under two weeks has gone from zero to 2.5 million followers. So, yeah, just one day, like, like a week or so ago, which this is what got me to freaking tweet again. Because I saw Hunter Hunter trending, which it does every now and then. But we see in this account, and everybody's like, yo, what is going on? And people are like, yeah, Togashi made a, made a Twitter account and saying that Hunter Hunter is coming back, that he's working on manuscripts. And that, so it seems like, from, from my understanding, is that at least like, it, I've heard like mixed things, but it seems like he is potentially working on 10 chapters. Um, and it seems like he's it's, the first post he made was like just four left. So at the time, he had already did six of, of the supposed 10, which is the amount that it normally comes out in a volume. Because for those of y'all that might remember. So first of all, Hunter Hunter manga has been on hiatus since 2018. Um, and, I, and I think the final volume, like the last volume that came out was like 2019 or something like that or whatever. But we haven't gotten a manga chapter since like 2018. Um, may, maybe like the very end of 2019, maybe somewhere in there. Um, but so crazy thing on a couple of fronts. So first of all, yeah, it's been at least three years since we've gotten a hundred, hundred chapter. Um, but 
the last few times he came off of hiatus in those years past, whatever, he was putting out at least 10 chapters a year, which was enough for a volume. So he would put out the chapters. Then we wouldn't see him for like a year and some change. Then he would come back, do another 10 chapters. We wouldn't see him again for a year and some change. And then boom, it's been three years. So this would be very dope if, if we can get, you know, 10 chapters from him sometime this year or whenever he decides to put them out. But the interesting thing though is that that I don't care about is that the last, so Hunter Hunter has been on hiatus for so long that the last chapter came out before Shonen Jump did the revamp to how their app and ser- how their uh, apps and streaming service works now. So I wonder how is that going to work for Hunter Hunter now? Because right now, none of Togashi's work is on the app. Um, you know, it's part of the subscription. Like you can still buy the volumes of Hunter Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho, but as far as like being able to, um, to read the individual chapters, whatever you can't do that. And so for me, it'll be it'll be kind of weird if they just drop the new chapter. But then they don't at least have like the the other chapters from this arc, you know, on there. So I don't know what they're going to do with that. Hopefully they decide they work something out to where, you know, his stuff finally gets put onto the Shonen Jump app. Hopefully, fingers crossed, Um, because I feel like that would be very dope. Um, But yeah, so Togashi is back. Um, So other manga news. Um. All right, so next bit of news, we got, and I, I love this just just for the just for the fact of, you know, just just kind of seeing like like where different stuff is, you know, how stuff is doing. So we got the manga sales for the first half of 2022, and man, things have been shaking up. So. All right, sorry about that. I wanted to pull up both of these just so y'all can have context for where things ended off. At the end of at the end of 2021 compared to May 2022. So, 6 months. So, 2021, I'm I'm going to read the top 10 from 1 to 10 from 2021 at the end of the year, 6 months ago. Number 1 was Jujutsu Kaisen. Number two, Demon Slayer. Three, Tokyo Revengers. Four, Attack on Titan. Five, My Hero Academia. Six, One Piece. Seven, Chainsaw Man. Eight, Spy Family. Nine, Kingdom. Ten, Haikyuu. So, halfway through 2022, our list looks like this. Number one, Jujutsu Kaisen. Number two, Tokyo Revengers, number three, Spy Family, number four, One Piece, number five, My Hero Academia, number six, Demon Slayer, number seven, Mystery to Iunakara, number eight, Kaiju number eight, number nine, My Dress of Darling, and number ten, Blue Lock. Wow. Things got shooken up and several different factors that kind of went into this. But so. OK, so let me see. So change over. So Attack on Titan, Chainsaw Man, Kingdom and Haikyuu all fell out of the top 10. So uh, what is that? One, two, three, four fell out of the top 10. So, Jujutsu Kaisen still held on number one. Uh, Tokyo Revengers moved from three to two. Spy Family jumped from number eight to number three. And obviously, the anime played a big part of that because we heard that, like, hey, after the anime came out, manga sales went like crazy. So, One Piece moved up from four, moved up from six to four. Uh, My Hero stayed at five. Um,. And that's it for what was on there previously. Now, uh, this mystery manga, I've I've seen the cover of it before, whatever. 
I've never read it though, but I'm gonna I'm have to at least like look into it or whatever. Um, now I think I think I heard that there was like a live action um, TV drama or something or whatever that kind of helped maybe boost the sales of that. Kaiju number eight, just because like it was already popular in Japan at, at already, but you know the the manga volume started coming out worldwide at the end of last year, so you know that's crazy though that it's still that big. My dress of darling, obviously the anime came out uh, in the in the uh, winter season of this year, and that helped the sales uh, explode. And Blue Lock, we know anime is coming. Um, we got confirmation that Blue Lock's anime is coming out in October, so this fall. So yeah, like I said, I just wanted to sh just to shout this out. Um, I always feel like, like these comparisons and stuff are very dope. Just getting a chance to just kind of see like like water the sales and different stuff like that for for manga um at a couple of different points at, uh you know at of uh a couple of different points in time during throughout the year so um couple of last little news things i want to touch on now a, a lot of star wars news happened you know over over the uh over the the last couple of days and you know, while most of it I don't really care about, you know, now, you know, I I enjoy Star Wars, you know, from a distance, you know, I'll, I'll watch the shows, whatever, and the movies, but I'm not necessarily going out day one all the time to check out this stuff, but, but a sequel to a surprisingly fun game so a few maybe i can't remember how many years ago it's been now but a game that came out called jedi star wars jedi fallen order was super dope it, and i know people kind of get tired of using this uh vernacular but it was kind of like kind of like a little bit of like a demon souls like type of game in the sense of like how you kind of like maneuver it and dodge around enemies and kind of like how you like navigate it through the environments with like enter interconnecting levels and stuff but that game was super dope super fun first of all because it is made by Re respawn studios which respawn does not miss for people who are not familiar <clears throat> respawn studios is formed by former call of duty infinity ward uh lead members so way back like freaking like this was like shoot this happened like around like somewhere between like 2010 ish somewhere in there after modern warfare i think two came out or whatever i think um anywho you know there was like a big shake up or whatever and basically like a lot of the executives and team went off and they formed respawn studios and they brought us titanfall now the first time i never really got to play too much because it was an xbox exclusive but Titanfall 2, still one of the greatest single player shooter campaigns of all time. And you can quote me on that. Titanfall 2. They are, Respawn Studios are so good at like movement and character control. So they did, they, like I said, they did Titanfall 1 and 2. They also did Apex Legends. Hit those of y'all listening, y'all probably heard my wife screaming in the background. She out there playing Apex right now. But they did Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And we got announced of the sequel, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now, I am super hype for this game. And you know, just to uh, I, I'm 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 just hype to play this game and, and stuff, whatever. So just like I said, just want to just give that a shout out, put that on y'all's radars. And last thing, I just want to just touch on um, Summer Games Fest. So we have um, a more solid schedule now of of uh. Of events and stuff that are coming up, so um, like I said, just like I said, just to put this out there for 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 my fellow my fellow gamers, um, 
So starting on June 2nd, so in a couple of days, uh, we're going to be getting a, stage, a PlayStation State of Play, which I'm very excited to see like, what they're going to bring to that. Um, a Summer Games Fest Live, which that's going to have a lot of, uh, you know, announcements and stuff. Um, Geeked Week or Netflix's Geeked Week Gaming. Don't know what that's going to be. Some some shows and stuff, whatever. So, interested to see what's going on with that. Well, speaking of which, um, there was an announcement of a... I can't remember which is which, but Netflix and Amazon, one of them are getting... are going to be doing a Horizon Zero Dawn series and the other one's doing a God of War series. So, just put that on y'all radar. But um, And then a Tribeca Games Spotlight... And then uh, June 12th, the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase. So like I said, just putting that on y'all radar so that my fellow gamers, y'all are aware. Even though like E3 is canceled, this is basically like the next best, the next best thing. Because the guy who runs Summer Games Fest, Jeff Keighley, he's been in the business a long time. And so he, he normally brings out some, some, some goodies. So... <clears throat> I think that's it as far as like general news stuff I wanted to touch on. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to go too much longer on all this stuff for the but just to kind of uh, touch on uh, moving on to uh, some games. Um, so your boy finally played some games. <laughs> so I finally set my butt down. And dove back into Horizon Forbidden West. I probably put like, probably, I don't know, at least five to ten hours over the last uh, few days or whatever. Um, Because especially with, you know, it being a holiday weekend, you know, some of the kids were gone. There was no sports stuff or whatever. So just kind of just took took some time and just like, you know what, Robert, I want to sit down and play this freaking game. So I did. Back to enjoying it and stuff, whatever. I'm glad I found that reconnection with the game. Now I had to get I gotta give a shout out to Vash. So <clears throat> Vash has been on a co op kick lately. Um, cause y'all know he is he has more or less claimed ownership of my Switch at this point. I, I, I gave him my Switch years ago at this point, um, to him. But so <clears throat> uh and shout out to uh to Tell from a uh, Mike Check Waifu. Because um, today on today's episode, he was talking about um, you know, how his kids and stuff, how they had just watched a new Sonic movie or whatever, and you know, the, his uh, one of his kids is, uh, or the, they're all into Sonic stuff, or whatever. So Vash um, likes to play um, Sonic. Um, what is it? Um, Sonic Mania. Um, I have it on pretty much on all the systems, or whatever. But he likes to play it on the Switch, and so of course the Switch take off the joy cons hey two people can play so sometimes he, he'd be like dad out here and so we'll kind of just like run through the levels and stuff um he likes doing like the little uh time trial races which is very fun now <clears throat> a game that i don't know how my son found this game um let me see if i can find it real quick but this is a game that if you are looking for some very cool, um, just just wholesome fun, you know, like co op time or whatever, with you know, to, to play with, like with the family and stuff. <clears throat> Let me see if I can show it real quick. This game is called Boomerang Fu. <laughs> so the characters that you play as. They're just freaking like little food items and stuff, whatever. So <clears throat> you might be a watermelon, you might be a slice of bread, you might be a popsicle, a coffee mug, whatever. Um, and you have boomerangs, and it is just a elimination game where you just run around and try to eliminate all the other people that's playing. And so, and it, it's just hey, one shot, you done. So he loves, he loves, loves, loves playing this game. Okay, so I found like a little, like a little gif of some gameplay clips, or whatever. But it, it's super sweet, super adorable. Um, uh, 
just just lost a simple fun. I like so I just want to just put that on my on people's radar for you know any fellow friends that might have you know kids. It is very simple to to learn and to play. But like I said, just lots of fun that we had. Um, so he 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 loves playing this freaking game. He gets me to play at least almost at least like like one match every day, just about. Um, but yeah, so shout out to uh, to Boomerang Fu. <laughs> We're playing it on the Switch, but I think it's on all the systems. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm gonna dive into a couple of uh, quick reads. So, before I do, so before I get into some other stuff, what I want to show off some some treats that I got for myself uh, the other day. So, first of all. I finally got my hands on Colorless Volume 1. I haven't read it yet, but I am so freaking eager to finally dive into this because this is one from the first time I saw it and I read the synopsis, which is <clears throat> a cosmic disaster changed the earth forever, stripping away every last drop of color from the world. Mankind also changed. The familiar human race is almost forgotten um, in a world now populated wholly by mutants. Um, against the backdrop of a moody urban landscape, a lone wolf investigator named Avidia relies on both his wits and extraordinary gun to hunt down the world's last scraps of color. He soon crosses path with a pass with a very special girl one who might hold the key to bring him back what the world has lost <clears throat> so yeah so that synopsis and then like I said just, just the whole premise and stuff whatever it just like it just looks so freaking dope so I cannot wait to freaking dive in and read this um, and even just, just like the feel of this like it just feels so nice so finally got my hands on that this other one was a unexpected uh, potentially hidden gem. <laughs> it just came out, but I found out about this because um, one of the manga accounts that I follow that just like just like shares new series and stuff, whatever, had posted a different series by this author. But um, but <clears throat> this manga called Lost Lad London, Volume One. Um, by Shima Shinya, uh, who has who is also doing a, I think like a Star Wars Rebels like manga currently. But the art style of the characters of both this as well as as well as some of their other series is what got my attention. And the premise, I'm only going to read the first line, first couple of lines, because that's all I read, and that was enough to sell me. The whole of London is shocked when the mayor is found dead on an underground train, but perhaps none more than university student Al Adley. Um, and that's all I read. There's more to the synopsis you can go and read on your own, but I was like, between that synopsis, the look of it, I was like, that's all I need to know. So I picked it up and I'll be uh, reading that soon. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, but so th those are the couple things I picked up. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start with uh, j just giving a little shout out. I'm not going to talk about it in depth right now. <clears throat> like I'm trying to minimize my talking a little bit just because my freaking throat. But um, shout out to My Hair Academia Vigilantes. Um, it has come to an end. The series ended. I believe it was chapter 126, I believe, was the final chapter. Let me confirm that. Man, sorry, I just opened the epic freaking. Cho Chojin X, they freaking be dropping chapters, like, randomly at nighttime. It is always at nighttime. Like, it is freaking, it's midnight right now. And the freaking manga chapter dropped within like the last like couple of hours, um, which I I can dig, but um, yeah, chapter one twenty six for vigilantes. So 
yeah, that series has come to an end. And um, overall, I enjoy the series overall. Um, and I definitely would recommend it. If you are a fan of the main My Hero Academia series, um, then I highly recommend checking out Vigilantes. Because uh, like I said, it, it has enough of its own style while still kind of you know peppering in some familiar faces and stuff, whatever, um, throughout the series. But, you know, it's still pretty dope. Um, Overall, I feel like we maybe could have used like another chapter or two or whatever to kind of like, you know, expand on some stuff, whatever, because the final chapter was kind of like, OK, um, but I, I wish that there was more, I guess is basically what I'm getting at with that. But in general, shout out to it. You know, can't can't knock it. Um, shoot, do I even want to talk about this? Um, hmm. Very brief mention on oh, Spy Family manga, and these are the these many sixty two point one two three four chapters. That came out uh, over over the last month or so. <clears throat> These chapters, we got a look into Lloyd's backstory of him as a kid, and then how he eventually became a spy. Man, that was some. Um, they they were fantastic, but man, that was some some dark stuff. <laughs> um, <clears throat> not saying that you know we haven't had some dark moments. And spy family, but I think that might be like some of like the darkest it's gotten and like most serious tone that the that the series has gotten. But I still loved reading every bit of it though, because like I said, it was just very dope just getting a chance to kind of getting a look into Lloyd and inside of his mind. Um <clears throat> and shout out to <clears throat> in the most recent chapter, um <clears throat> Sorry, y'all, for all the throat clearing. Um, the dog Bond, Bond, and what you call? I can't remember like the little helper dude, Larry, whatever his name is. Go to the freaking dog park, or whatever, and he meets a little, a little, a little, uh, a little uh, Heidi, a little, a little dog Heidi. <laughs> and so it, it was just a cute little chapter of just Bond trying to impress this female dog and, and, and the guy trying to impress the woman and all this stuff, whatever. So, but shout out to spy family, uh, for, for being dope. Um, <clears throat> other manga I want to shout out real quick too is Akane Banashi. Cause first of all, um, why do I not have that in my favorites yet? Um, so that series it's about to get a uh, its first volume is about to come out in Japan soon, which is very exciting. And I've caught up with it. So I've read chapters seven through fifteen um the other day just because not not because I wasn't feeling the series whatever. I just I was like, you know what, I'm enjoying it, but I just kinda just let it build up whatever and I'm glad I did because it was a very awesome binge read. But um very cool thing that uh for the first volume Oda, the author of One Piece, gave it its blessing and just said, hey, I love this series. And that's kind of like like on the um, cover or on the sticker or whatever for volume one, um, because, you know, Akane Banashi is about a, 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 a young lady basically trying to avenge her father um, through a through a Rakugo, which, you know, um, I heard uh, Steve, who is the translator, who is the official translator of both One Piece and Akane Banashi. He mentioned how, you know, how it is pretty well known that Oda is a fan of of uh, uh, Rakugo plays as well, which they said they, they mentioned that, you know, he's done tons of references about it throughout the whole series and especially in Wano. So, yeah, so. Go check it out because, like I said, I'm really enjoying the series and it is a pleasant, surprising, <clears throat> and change of pace from the normal stuff that is in Shonen Jump. So go check that out. And speaking of One Piece, <clears throat> so, man, <laughs> so 
And this is One Piece manga chapter 1050. I don't remember what the last thing I talked about because like I said, I've been gone for a few weeks. But just speaking in general, the fight is finally over. Um, all right. So, yeah. So, so since the last time I recorded, <laughs> man, I'm going to just touch on this briefly. So, we finally, though, it was freaking short as hell, but... We finally at least got like 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 a little glimpse of like Kaido's backstory. So we got to see freaking Kaido when he was 10, 15, and then when he was, you know, like a young adult or whatever. But just kind of getting to see a little bit of like like, so like his journey and stuff, whatever. Of course, Kaido would be from the vodka kingdom. I just bust that up when I read that I was I was like, of course, of course Kaido is from the vodka kingdom. Um, as much as he freaking drinks. But learning or getting a little bit more context to some stuff that they talked about like back when he was first introduced about he was how he was captured by the navy all these times but find out no he only got captured on purpose whenever he was hungry so they because he know okay hey i can get food here once i'm full i'm a bounce um so that that was just kind of funny to learn but also learning that he got he got sold off to the navy in order for his for his uh, country to get a place at the rivery um and then we get to see that okay when he first joined the rocks, but they kind of like breeze past that stuff, whatever. So, but hopefully, hopefully we'll get more information on that. But um, adult moment I liked was when uh, basically Kaido told King he was like, "Hey," in the flashback, like, "Hey, I think I think I know who Joy Boy is," and he said, "I think Joy Boy um, will be um, who uh, basically whoever can defeat me is Joy Boy." So that was just a, just a very dope moment, and then and then you know this chapter ten fifty, we pretty much got got the confirmation that you know both Kaido and Big Mom are are out, quote unquote, uh, for now at least. Um, but and, and they freaking got knocked down through Wano into a into a pool of magma. <laughs> So we'll see how how that's gonna go. Um, Big Mom and Kaido and some magma. Um, very sweet moment with uh, with Otoko and uh, uh, is it? I'm sorry, I think I think it's Hitetsu, um, the the Tengu guy. Um, as she's kind of like sitting in her little uh, paper lantern thing into the air, saying, "You know, thank you, Daddy." Um, but yeah, like like we're kind of heading towards. The part of Wano I have been eager to get to, which is hey, the aftermath of all this stuff that happened. Now we see Momonosuke tell uh, uh, Zunisha that like, hey, I'm not ready to open up the borders of Wano just yet. Um, and he kind of announces to the citizens that like, hey, you know, we have defeated Kaido, and then basically the chapter ends with um momo you know um turning back into his human form and then uh hiori and uh denjiro basically coming out to just announce like yes you know uh um you know we're about to introduce you to the new shogun of wano and so i'm excited i hope that oda doesn't blue balls us next chapter (laughs) and keep us waiting but i hope the next chapter we get to see what adult Momonosuke looks like. Um, I think that would be very dope, very cool to to finally see. Um, but yeah, but that that's that's where things are in One Piece. So some like I said, some some very cool, very dope things going on. Um, so I'm trying to close all these freaking million tabs I got open. Um, <clears throat> so last thing I want to give a shout out to that I read. Um, and I'm not even going to go into detail about it or whatever. I just want to sit and just mention that I read it. I'm going to do something about with this later on. But, and I was reading this during their every day for like a week and a half. I finally read all of Invincible Compendium 1. Man, that is a humongous, humongous book. Which, if you've seen the physical versions in person, that you understand, because that, that sucker is like over like 1,100 pages or something crazy. 
Um, but I had got it digitally because last year after season one ended, they had the compendiums on sale digitally or whatever. And so I only got compendium one because <clears throat> it was like 20 bucks or something, something stupid cheap. And in hindsight, I kind of wish I just went and just bought all of them because <laughs> normally, normally they like 50, 60 plus dollars. Um, and now they're still like 40 plus bucks, or whatever. But man, that was a freaking awesome read. And all I'm going to say is that I now understand now season one of the animated series was really dope, but now having context of how it was originally written they crammed a lot of stuff in season one and they re they changed around a lot of stuff with like 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 the place and time a lot of events happened they did like uh you know ethnicity swaps with certain people and characters and all types of different stuff was changed around so but it was a freaking fantastic read that like i said i'm i'm i'm, I'm a, maybe trying to see if i can do like like a separate discussion about that later on in the month or something so i'm gonna have something planned for that i just don't know 100 percent yet in what form but yeah but shout out to invincible compendium one man that that took me on a ride like i said for like a good week and a half i was reading some of it every day like every chance i had like hey if i'm at practice with somebody while I'm laying down for bed, just, you know, out and about at work or wherever. I was trying to get it in. But <clears throat> real quick, let me touch on some stuff I watched um, real quick. So first of all, um, shout out to, um, <clears throat> shoot, I don't even know which one. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I guess just speaking generally first. Um, everything I've still been keeping up with has still been awesome. Uh, Aoashi, been really enjoying that still, of course. Spy Family, uh, Trapped in a Dating Sim has still been very fun. And I feel like there's some, uh, something else I've been keeping up with, but you know, I, I've kind of like slowed down like on a lot of stuff. I like I said, I, I just, for one, I just hadn't really been feeling it because it's like, man. There's just so much stuff coming out and I'm just not, I don't want to force myself to watch stuff. And then there's like so much more stuff coming. Like, like, um, like I said, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but just for people out there, like the Obi-Wan TV series just started. Um, Miss Marvel is starting next week. Um, we also, uh, Stranger Things, uh, season four, part one. That came out over the weekend too. I didn't even get to watch that. Um, my niece Lydia, she watched it. Whatever, said she liked it. So I'm, I'm gonna get to that. Um, hopefully soon. But man, then, man, some of them episodes were like an hour and a half. So it's like uh, movie length episodes <laughs> for like eight episodes or whatever. But I'll get to that eventually. But uh, also freaking the Umbrella Academy and the boys are both about to start it's a lot <laughs> it is a lot of stuff going on right now but um but like i said i'll, I'll get to stuff as i get to it but uh and speak speaking of my niece lydia shout out to lydia because um um when when they came by to visit me yesterday or whatever to it to you know my brother-in-law bought me the planner and stuff uh uh she told me that she has been studying Japanese. Now, for those who might not remember, earlier this year, this is the niece that I got some manga for her birthday. I got her uh, Come Can't Communicate, Spy Family, and uh, and Bongo Stray Dogs. And so when I saw her over the weekend, she was like, she's like, she finished both Spy Family and uh, and uh, Come Can't Communicate. She loved both of them, and she's like halfway through uh, Bongo Stray Dogs uh, manga. So I'm like, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And she told me that she is studying how to, uh, how to, uh, uh, she's studying Japanese. So she wants to learn to like read, write, speak, all that stuff. So she is studying that right now, which is very awesome for my 14 year old niece to be doing that. So shout out to you, Lydia. If you're ever watching this or <laughs> listen to this, I love you. And I'm like, hey, if, if, if you, if you didn't have proof that, she, that that's my niece, hey, Hey, daddy to talk. 
a guy that talks about anime and manga and games who has a child named after an anime character who has a anime tattoo who has pets named after anime and manga characters that of course of course his niece will be learning Japanese <laughs> but um but yeah so first thing I want to touch on just briefly is freaking Young Justice man <laughs> my boy Rob J if, if, if you were listening to this boy man 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 Young Justice got me stressing <sighs> all everything's about to come to a head very soon Zod them have escaped the Phantom Zone and all hell's about to break loose because Superman ain't got his powers and yeah it, it is just a lot of shenanigans going on and like I said stress is at an all time high but I am excited I, I am just loving these recent episodes and I cannot wait uh, moving on summertime rendering oh boy <laughs> this show this show continues to surprise and keep me on my freaking toes because I, I am just in for the freaking ride at this point you know um just because, especially knowing that like we have so much left to go which speaking of which real quick uh, shout out as well I want to mention because I just found out the other day that we are getting physical copies of summertime rendering manga and they should have came out yesterday so they should have came out on May 31st is when this would be hitting store shelves um, and they're doing hardcover versions mm, 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 mm. so your boy might have to uh, add that to the collection at some point it's on my list to add to the collection at some point um, but yeah, but back to the anime. Um, man, <sighs> too many unknown factors, man. Like, like I, I enjoyed getting to get like a deeper insight on uh, Hizuru and learning about like her, her brother, kind of sharing her brother's spirit is in her body, something weird like that or whatever, and they're sharing her body, and so like, like the tail sign is like whenever the hair is pulled up into a ponytail that's the brother and so it just, just the way they were doing all that stuff whatever was just like very dope um the last few episodes cause i forgot i haven't talked about this in a few weeks but the last few episodes have been freaking fantastic and but like i said just once again just keeping us on our toes because you know it's like okay you think that okay hey you know he's been through this loop before whatever he kind of has an edge but stuff is changing stuff is happening that shouldn't be happening like uh like when he finally got home mio was cooking that should not be happening and then freaking uh the sister of uh, ushio shows up in the house and is like yo what are you doing so yeah summertime we're doing y'all <laughs> freaking fantastic show And we're only like a quarter of the way through, <laughs> which is so freaking dope. Now, next up, <clears throat> I'm going to touch on this just for a little bit. Um, Black Lagoon. Now, I unintentionally rewatched all of Black Lagoon. Um, I, I didn't rewatch the, the Roberta um OVAs or whatever. I just watched the core, like twenty four, however many episodes it was of of, se- of the of the original season of Black Lagoon. Now, that's a series that in my mind I always held in pretty high regard, and I've wanted to go back and rewatch it for a while and to get back into it because, especially, shout out to uh um. Uh, Lord, um, Chelsea from uh, Nerding Out with Chelsea, because uh, she has been reading the manga for Black Lagoon, um, which it doesn't release very often, but she has been reading it and stuff. And so hearing her talking about it like like over this last year 
on her podcast, you know, like I said, just kind of brought it back to my mind again. And for some reason, so for me and Black Lagoon, I really didn't remember too much about it. It's like, it's like, I know, you know, it's a group of people on a boat. There's a black guy, you know, uh, a business guy that gets wrapped up in all this stuff or an office worker guy that gets wrapped up into this underground world. Um, I remember Bal- uh, Balalanka because, of course, her her uh, her attitude and the scar. And then, of course, Revy, because, hey, how, how how could you not remember the the Jane booty shorts and the double pistols? You know, and the other thing I always remember, too, is the closing theme music. Now, that is definitely a sound that it it has just the right amount of like somberness to it and so anywho so like i said just, I, th- I think just because of like where my mind has been these last few weeks with everything i'm just kind of been trying to work through or whatever i was just like you know what i'm gonna rewatch black lagoon now i started out just 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 maybe just gonna watch an episode so i watched like an episode where i was like, okay okay and then it just became after that it just became okay every day i'm gonna watch at least an episode or two um until I make my way through it, and then last night or yesterday, um, I finally finished the last uh, couple of last few episodes, and so just like I remember, definitely very action packed, but a lot more, a lot more in depth character moments and character growth, and just kind of. Lots of sadness for certain characters as far as like, you know, characters doing certain things or being in certain positions because of sometimes stuff that is out of their hands, stuff that is forced or put onto them, like the episode with the two little like twin kids that was like taking out everybody, whatever, and like finding out like, you know, the situation they were in growing up, which led to them having their minds warped like this, whatever. Um, to, you know, a little bit more information on, you know, on Revy's backstory, um, Balalanka's backstory to where, like, she had dreams of becoming this, this Olympian, this Olympic champion for her family, for her country, and she ends up becoming this ruthless, like, war general in the process, um, or, you know, along the way, because, you know, things change, life changed, and then... Of course, the the young lady, um, the young lady who got wrapped up in the whole Yakuza stuff, whatever, that, that ended off the season. And so, you know, and of course, you know, and Rock himself just kind of, you know, getting thrown into this crazy world and kind of in a way like trying to like trying to walk that fine line in between. But, you know. It's tough. You really can't do that. Um, you know, sometimes you got to, hey, you know, if you're put in certain situations, you're not going to be able to always walk that line. And so, yeah, but like I said, just, just a bit of somber sadness, um, like I said, with a lot of the tone and themes. Um, and I truly felt it every time that closing theme played, which... Let me see if I can at least play maybe like a little bit of it. Black Lagoon. <clears throat> All right, let me see if I can see if this will come through. Uh, hold on. Make sure my sound isn't too crazy. that that music y'all like it it get like 
that's what I remember. And then like, especially because and 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 they'll use parts of the the theme throughout certain moments within the episode. But man, it like truly hits. Like I said, like if, if it's like a like a really like heavy moment happening at the at the end of an episode, and then they go into the theme like that, man. And you know, it's just you know. Visually, it is just Revy, you know, just walking along this beach or this shoreline and, you know, um, just shedding herself of everything. Just like she's, you know, you slowly see her, you know, like dropping bullets, dropping clips, dropping the guns, shoes, dropping her shoes, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, um. Black Lagoon still definitely still one I would recommend watching Black like, so just know that hey you know you're gonna get lots of great action um lots of dope um amazing women um who can hold their own against anybody who are real bosses when when it comes to to knowing what they want doing what they want how they want from Revy to uh to to the 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 nun chick to the um the kind of a uh, Japanese lady who had like the different blades and stuff to of course Balalanka man the list goes on and on and on but um but yeah but hopefully someday I can um you know find and check out the manga um because like i said even though like like it's not a whole lot more to it you know beyond well i can't say that definitively but you know it's been a slow release over the many years um but like i said it, it was still very nice getting a chance to go back and, re, and revisiting um black lagoon so like i said definitely go watch it give it a shot if you haven't already um, highly recommend it. Now, <clears throat> final show I'm gonna touch on tonight. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Better Call Saul mid season finale. Now, y'all, <laughs> Better Call Saul, and heck yes. Spoiler, 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 spoiler for everything that happened up until the, the mid-season finale um, that aired last week, a couple weeks ago. Um, I, th I think that might have been episode six. Let me see. AMC. <sighs> da, 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 da. Let's see if I can find this real quick. So yeah, so final season, so season six, episode um, seven. So yeah, so season six up to up to season six, episode seven. So <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I, I don't know. I don't know if I was still recording the podcast or not. But of course, if I wasn't or whatever, um, the episode with Nacho, you know, going out. Um, you know that that that's been that that this has been like the interesting thing with Better Call Saul. With a lot of these newer characters that they introduced, that you're like, okay, they weren't in Breaking Bad, so it's like, okay, did maybe they somehow manage to get out, or did they get killed along the way, or whatever? Well, you know, of course, Nacho, you know, I guess kind of in a way took yourself out, but in a, you know, blaze of glory, so to speak. Um. And then, uh, what's it called? So, what is his name? Uh, Lalo? I think Lalo. Uh, do, 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 do. I think, yeah, yeah, Lalo. Man, talk about a patient person and very methodical in what he does. Now, the whole time, Gus and Mike, they're armored up, security, uh, which which was super dope. When we first got introduced to this older couple, white man, black lady, older couple, 
riding their bikes through the neighborhood or whatever and then going into this house with all these security cameras and stuff or whatever going on and then somebody going into like a secret passage via the basement secret door long tunnel popping out into what we find out is uh, Gus's house where more security guys and da 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 craziness but they're all okay armored up prepare for okay well, we know Lalo's probably still alive it's just a matter of where he's gonna pop up or whatever Lalo up here doing his thing traveling around doing this and that or whatever this man goes overseas <laughs> to get information about what Gus them were doing in the uh, in the underground below the laundromats, you know, which is the famous location of the lab from Breaking Bad. But, you know, in early season of Better Call Saul, you know, where, uh, you know, Mike had hired these guys to, you know, to dig the hole and stuff, whatever. And then, you know, the incident happened and they, uh, the one guy died. And so they kind of paid everybody hush money, like, hey, go away, don't talk to nobody, blah, 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 blah. Freaking Lalo goes overseas, finds the wife of the guy that got killed, uh, more or less seduces her in a way, or charms her, maybe I should say, finds out where she lives, sneaks into her house, gets the information he needs, then tracks down one of the workers who is living out in the middle of nowhere in the woods, finds him, tortures him, gets the information he needs, comes back, and then just camps for days in the sewer, watching the uh, the laundry mat or whatever. So while that's going on, we got Jim and Kim, or... Uh, Jimmy and Kim with their shenanigans and their plans and stuff, whatever of them basically like trying, trying to, to take Howard out, which I, I <laughs> it was funny to see some scenes stressful and others, but just every, every, everything that they did, which this is one thing I love about the show of like the long game of, you know, the little boxing match him and Jimmy had, to the investigator that Howard thought he hired, which ended up being somebody that was working for Saul, and them setting him up with this, uh, with uh, these fake photos of this interim judge for this big case that that Howard them are on, and that whole thing was so freaking wild and crazy. From you know. The uh, you know them finding somebody that looks like the judge guy, to happenstance Jimmy running into the guy at at a, at a freaking liquor store or whatever, finding out that the guy arm was in a cast, them having to go and do a full reshoot, and Kim being so committed that she passed up potentially one of the biggest opportunities of her life. To, to make a life changing career move, she gives it up to help pull the plan together. Because like man, because at, at the end of that episode, or whatever, like when she did, when she busted that U turn, like hey, I'm coming back. We gonna we gonna do this, and you know them reshooting stuff, whatever, and then the stuff with the photos, and then basically making Howard seem like he was crazy, because that was freaking genius. To where Howard looked at the photos, or whatever that he got from the detective. And then when he had his assistant and got to when he tried to call out the guy, because man, Howard's face when the judge guy walked into the room, and then Howard calls him out in front of everybody, and then he gets the photos, and one they had laced some type of like fluid that dilated his speech like did something trippy to him or whatever via the liquid going through his skin that within itself was weird but then them having like a freaking like a transition photograph to where it completely morphed to Saul throwing a frisbee or whatever shenanigan crap it was um, was so dope 
And then, like I said, just led Howard to looking like a fool in front of everybody. And then him confronting them, him coming to their house after, you know, they're just having a, a movie night to celebrate or whatever. Howard coming to their house and just being like, okay, hey, what what is the point? What is, what is, what do y'all get out of this? Where he's like, and especially he's, and he was especially talking to Kim of like, hey, you're a brilliant lawyer. Like, why are you doing this? Which... That was something I really appreciated was getting to see like more of Kim's backstory as a kid to that situation to where she got caught shoplifting, but her mom didn't punish her. Her mom rewarded her by giving her something that she was trying to shoplift or whatever. And so just getting that flashback to that. And then, you know, with, you know, with what's, what's going on now. Uh, but man, the shock of how are they talking to them and I love I love 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 when shows do like the subtle things to put fear in your heart <clears throat> so it was already you know we already had that moment to where you know when they answered the door and Howard came in the camera panned over to the uh, this counter on the table where like when the door opened little gust of wind phew, you know, you saw like the little flame flicker. <coughs> well, while they're standing there talking to, to Howard, we notice they go to the, uh, you know, Jimmy looks down at the candle. He notices like it's flickering again, like a gust of wind. And comes walking Lalo, standing behind uh, Howard. And, you know, of course, Kim and Jimmy are freaking out. And they're just like, hey, Howard, uh, you you need to just leave, just get out of here, whatever. Howard's like, no, da da da. He's like, you know, who is this guy? Da 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 da. And then to make a statement, right there, point blank, he's putting on the silencer, and then he just takes out Howard right there and says, "Hey, we need to talk." And that is how the episode ended. I'm like, God, dog, no. And so now we have to wait. It's freaking, it's <laughs> July 11th. July 11th, a month and a half, y'all. July 11th. And when it comes back, it's only going to be six episodes. And so, of course, this has me stressed to high heaven for multiple reasons. Because for one, like I said, that, that, for us to get that before we go on break, bruh, because, you know, the biggest thing, like I said earlier, all these characters who wasn't in Better Call Saul, you know, is Lalo going to be dead? More than likely. Um, especially just because, like, they, they've set up too much stuff, whatever, with, like, um, Gus hiding the gun under the like the tractor thing, whatever underground, all that stuff. For us, so I'm pretty sure Lalo's gonna be taking out the picture. But the biggest question for everybody, I feel like, is Kim. I truly hope that somehow Kim gets out of this alive. Um, but if she doesn't, then I can kind of see how that leads Saul down the path that he's on now. Him and the the secretary lady. Because right now she is so happy and bubbly, but we know something has to happen to truly make him fully dive, no cares given, into that side of things. And so, yeah, um, like I said, I am fearful that more than likely Kim probably isn't going to make it out of this. But I would love if somehow she did get out and then she shows up to help him. And the current day finale stuff, whatever. So, we shall see. But, yeah, there will be six episodes when it comes back on July 11th. So, prepare to stress out, y'all, because I know I am. <laughs> but, I think that's going to do it for me. Um, back on my bad habits again, but it, it is okay. Because, like I said, I'm life happened and stuff kind of got me off of my off of my uh, my normal game and stuff 
um, on my or, or my original my original plan. Like I said, especially like between me, like me having this little raspy voice slash cough stuff and family life and all that stuff, whatever. But <clears throat> we are in June, and I hope y'all are ready for all the dope reviews I have coming for some for some uh, some stuff y'all probably haven't heard of or very few have heard of. Um, I hope y'all are as excited as I am for me to do uh, this uh, this uh, collaboration um, panel at Fan Expo. Whoops, not going. Sorry, I had a, all these awkward pauses, but but yeah, y'all. Um, yeah, the collaboration between. Me, Steve, what's the name? I am so excited for that panel. But like I said, I'm supposed to wrap things up. Um, thank y'all, as always, for listening and or watching. Um, it feels good to. Uh, it felt good to, to go, go to my to my drawer and to uh, to pull out my microphone and camera, like I'm Link uh, pulling up a piece of the of the Triforce. Na, 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 na. <laughs> um, but like I said, I'm, I'm gonna you know, work on getting myself back right on hour, get this freaking get my voice under control. I got two weeks because I can't be having this going on while I'm up on stage, man. I, I gotta be ready for the spotlight because, like I said, this is a, a big opportunity that. that you know, comes around once every blue moon, and so I want to be prepared, and I, and I want us all to bask in the moment and to grasp the moment. And so, yeah. So with that, um, like I said, be on the lookout for official date and time information. Um, as always, you can follow me everywhere at Dad Needs to Talk. That's on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I haven't been using TikTok in a while, but like I said, I have. Lots of dope reviews coming up soon. Lots of dope conversations and guests I have planned and other collaborations that are um, on the horizon. So be look out for that stuff. And yeah, y'all, like I said, we're going to we're going to experiment. We're going to play around. We're going to try some new things. And I hope you enjoy the journey because we're definitely going to go on a journey. And so with that being said, you know, as I always say, treat yourself to something nice. Read some manga, watch some anime, play some video games, and live your best life. And with that being said, um, last, last little quote I want to mention. I was sitting on talking about this earlier, but I just now remembered. But um, I had a moment where I was writing down my thoughts. I kind of came to the conclusion, and I might make notes to, 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 to touch on this again next episode. But I may know because I'm like, I was thinking, I was like, I was like, why am I like, like I have all these thoughts and ideas, like, 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 like my mind feels like it's ready, but I just don't have the energy, or whatever. And I came to the conclusion and to the to the to the phrase, my mind is ready, but my body is not. And what I meant by that was, you know, getting my getting myself physically healthy and in shape and ready to be able to act upon all these thoughts and dreams that I have so yeah like I said just you know get get your mind right get your body right um, and let's uh, move forward towards greatness and so with that I'm done y'all be seeing me very soon catch you next time <laughs>